Food is to our body what fuel is to an automobile. It contains biomacromolecules such as carbohydrates, proteins and lipids, as well as vitamins and minerals which enable our body to perform functions such as respiration, excretion and so on. However, our body is incapable of using certain biomacromolecules such as carbohydrates and proteins in their original form. It therefore relies on the digestive system to break down food and convert the biomacromolecules into smaller, simple and absorbable molecules. Our digestive system comprises the alimentary canal or the gastrointestinal tract and the digestive glands. The alimentary canal the long pathway through which food enters the body and solid wastes are ingested includes organs such as the mouth, pharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. If we observe the structure of an alimentary canal, we will see that the mouth, the anterior opening of the alimentary canal, leads to the oral cavity or buccal cavity, which contains the teeth and the tongue. Each tooth in the cavity is embedded in a socket of the jawbone, forming a type of attachment known as a fecodont. The hard chewing surface of the tooth, made up of enamel, helps in chewing and breaking down of food. Interestingly, human beings develop two sets of teeth during their lifetime and are hence known as diphyodont. The permanent teeth in adults are of four types. Incisors represented by I, Canines represented by C. Premolars and molars represented by PM and M respectively. The arrangement of teeth in the upper and lower half of the jaw in the I, C, PM and M order is expressed using the dental formula 2123 upon 2123. The tongue, the second member of the oral cavity, is a freely mobile muscle attached to the floor of the oral cavity by the frenulum. The upper surface of the tongue is covered with papillae, small projections arranged in a row, some of which have taste buds. The tongue helps push food from the oral cavity into the pharynx, a passageway for air and food. The pharynx opens into the windpipe or trachea and esophagus, a narrow tubular muscular organ. When food moves through the pharynx and approaches the esophageal entrance, a flap of elastic cartilage tissue called the epiglottis reflexively closes, thereby preventing the food from entering the windpipe. The esophagus conducts the food from the pharynx to the stomach. At the end of the esophagus lies the gastroesophageal sphincter, a one-way valve that allows food to enter the stomach but prevents it from regurgitating. The stomach a J-shaped sac is located in the upper left part of the abdominal cavity between the esophagus and the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. Gastric acid inside the stomach digests the food we eat. The stomach is made of three major parts. A fundic region, cardiac portion, 
and a pyloric portion. At the end of the pyloric portion lies the pyloric sphincter, which regulates the flow of the churned food from the stomach into the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. The duodenum is followed by the jejunum and ileum that make up the rest of the small intestine. While the duodenum is the short, U-shaped portion, the jejunum is the long, coiled portion. The ileum, on the other hand, is a highly coiled region that opens into the large intestine. The large intestine, which is the second last part of the alimentary canal, is divided into three regions, namely the cecum, colon, and rectum. The cecum, a small blind sac which hosts some symbiotic microorganisms, is not as developed in humans as in ruminants. Moreover, in humans, the cecum gives rise to a narrow finger-like tubular projection called the vermiform appendix, which is a vestigial or functionless organ. The cecum opens into the colon, which is divided into an ascending, a transverse and a descending colon. The descending part of the colon leads to the rectum, a bag-like structure which stores undigested food as fecal matter till it can be passed out. The rectum leads to the last member of the alimentary canal, the anus, which ingests the undigested food remains. The wall of the anus as well as other organs of the alimentary canal is made up of four layers of tissues, namely the serosa, muscularis, submucosa and mucosa. The serosa, the outermost layer, is made up of a thin mesothelium along with some connective tissues. The serosa is followed by the muscularis, a muscle layer made up of a circular inner layer and a longitudinal outer layer of smooth muscle cells. Adjoining the muscularis is the submucosa, which is a soft connective tissue layer containing blood vessels, nerve endings, and lymphatic vessels. Did you know that in the duodenum, glands are also present in the submucosa? Finally, the mucosa, the innermost layer of the alimentary canal, lines the lumen of the alimentary canal. It is an important layer as the mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which help in lubrication by secreting mucus. In the stomach, mucosa forms gastric glands and irregular folds called rugae, whereas in the small intestine, mucosa forms villi, small finger-like projections. The mucosa also forms crypts, called the crypts of Lieberkuhn, between the bases of the villi. The borders of the villi have a brush-like appearance, as the cells lining the villi produce several microscopic projections called microvilli. Both villi and microvilli considerably increase the absorptive surface area of the small intestine. Villi also have a network of capillaries and a large lymph vessel called the lacteal. Interestingly, the tissues of the alimentary canal wall show modifications by way of thickness and so on. Apart from the alimentary canal, the digestive system also consists of the salivary glands, liver and the pancreas, 
which are collectively known as the digestive glands. The salivary glands, located just outside the oral cavity, secrete salivary juices into the cavity. There are three pairs of salivary glands. The parotid gland located in the cheek. The submaxillary or submandibular gland found in the lower jaw. And the sublingual gland located below the tongue. The liver the largest gland of the body is located in the abdominal cavity just below the diaphragm. It has two hepatic lobes which are covered by a thin connective tissue sheath called the glissens capsule. These lobules contain hepatic cells called hepatocytes which are arranged in the form of cords. The bile secreted by the hepatic cells passes through the hepatic ducts and is stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. A duct emerging from the gallbladder along with the hepatic duct from the liver forms the common bile duct whose main function is to conduct the bile stored in the gallbladder into the duodenum. Apart from the liver, the digestive glands also include the pancreas. Situated in the duodenum, the pancreas is a compound and elongated organ consisting of exocrine and endocrine parts. While the exocrine portion secretes an alkaline pancreatic juice containing enzymes, the endocrine portion secretes hormones such as insulin and glucagon. The pancreatic duct, which carries the pancreatic juices from the exocrine portion, joins the common bile duct and both of them open into the duodenum as the hepatopancreatic duct, which is guarded by the sphincter of odi. Together, the organs of the alimentary canal and the associated glands digest the food we eat and ingest the undigested food.